and welcome back. I hope you brought your jackets because it's going to be a little bit of a blizzard. It's getting chilly here at the St. Clair College campus during the mid-season showdown because Owen, and I'll have to say my name at some point, I'm going to just say my name, Daniel, uh, and Owen, uh, you know, because like you said, Owen, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a chilly team. You want to give us a little bit of information on that one? That is true. If anybody actually watches regionals or just any Pokemon VGC in general, you'll know that at Eurotrek, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, the team that won there was an Articuno slash Alolan Ninetales mm -hmm. uh, uh, based off team. Um, so Alolan Ninetales comes in, uh, sets up the snow with snow warning, and then Articuno comes in, Blizzard spams, because if you guys don't know, in snow, Blizzard is 100% accurate. Um, so this is going to be very interesting to see. We haven't seen an Articuno team yet, uh, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, the, the two competitors we do have right now are J uh, Jeffrey Yang and Steven Stark. Two players we haven't seen at all today and both these players are two and two now they're fighting for the chance to get into the top cut the, the the small chance that they do have um this isn't guaranteeing that them a, like you know top cut if they do win this game there is a potential that they do make it um mm -hmm. so obviously if you are either or you do want to sweep this set you don't want the set to go to a game three because that's what determines you being able to get in top cut or not get into top cut uh, and as you see, our two competitors are gearing up and getting ready to play. I got to ask you, though, right? Uh, Looking scoring. at both teams, what are your thoughts? I mean, and everyone's going to call me a bandwagoner, okay? But I love Articuno. I'm very happy to see it showing up. I'm an ice, I'm an ice guy. Ghost Ice. That's why... Wow. How can I forget his name right? Frostlass is one of my favorite Pokemon. Right. Ghost Ice type. Love it. So, or yeah, Frostlass or Glalie. Not a fan of Glalie as much because it's kind of ugly. Frostlass. Is cool wow. Uh, yes. Okay. Kind of rude. Come I'm a on. style over substance kind of guy when it comes to Pokemon at the very least. Uh, but I love Ice type. I love Glass type. These are typings that we don't really get to see shine a lot. Yeah. Um, but. Articuno, also one of my favorite legendaries, just in general, being able to actually find a nice niche and in such an interesting way as well. Uh, I did actually, I didn't watch the regionals, but like kind of the buzz that was started around it, you know, some anal analysis of the team that, and how it kind of works. The logic behind it, you didn't really delve too much into the move list, but mm -hmm. the choice specs, but you're running Blizzard. <laughs> Ice Beam, Freeze Dry, and yeah. Sheer Cold, which. And we'll touch on that for just a second. Yeah. You mentioned Ice Beam. That's a move you generally don't touch, especially really? if, yeah, especially if snow is up. Mm -hmm. Ice Beam, you don't click. You might click it when, like, you know, snow There's is no snow. down. Yeah. You're in, like, a 1v1 scenario, right? That might be a time where you use Ice Beam. But generally, most of the time, Articuno just wants to spam Blizzard. Mm -hmm. You also have, like you just mentioned, uh, Sheer Cold and Freeze Dry, right? You, like, Sheer Cold, for example, we'll talk about that, right? Um, for well, the, we have to. For, we have to. For the Pokemon that Articuno can't necessarily knock out with Blizzard, like, let's talk about Reggie, uh, Reggie Steel. Steel. We saw that earlier. We saw that earlier. For a Pokemon like Reggie Steel, a Pokemon that Articuno can't really knock out with Blizzard, right? After you switch back in, you have the chance of using Sheer Cold and hopefully being able to knock it out, especially with it being super defensive and Snow giving Ice types uh, a special defensive boost. I if so. I remember correctly, Not I don't sure. know if it's defensive or special defensive. Some someone's going to correct <laughs> this, um, but it still gives you a defensive boost. Plus the fact that Articuno is already naturally very bulky, um, it does allow it to live a couple hits to hopefully maybe get a one hit knockout mm -hmm. um, onto those like super bulky Pokemon. And that's what oh no, well just real quick what I really like about the sheer cold on this Pokemon is mm -hmm. it's not like a, a cheap like oh I really hope I get the I really hope I get the uh, the the one hit knockout here it's it's it is calculated like it makes sense like realistically you're not knocking this thing out with a blizzard you might as well just keep doing this a low accuracy chance move that will knock it out if it connects and it, it doesn't feel cheap i, I like yeah. it i really like it a lot um and again even though you have the choice specs uh it just makes Every other move you do so much better. Um, Snow Cloak it has. Does that increase evasiveness in the in Blizzard? It increases the evasiveness. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you say hit them with Ice Beam, Ice yeah. Beam is a hundred percent accurate move. Yeah, it's reduced. Right? Now it's going to be reduced down to eighty percent accuracy. Okay. And this is the same for like all the other moves too. It reduces it by like about twenty percent. So. Um, it's just rolling a lot of dice. Exactly. And eventually, one dice roll will be completely devastating for your opponent. It, it is really tough. It's really tough to play around for sure. The whole goal is you kind of want like for, for what I would do. I would might maybe bring like a maybe bring like a 
a tornado is, or uh, somebody that can set up another weather condition to sort of negate like that snow, mm -hmm. because that snow is super useful for Articuno. Blizzard goes from was it seventy percent accuracy, something like that, to like a hunt never misses. It doesn't miss. It doesn't have a hundred percent accurate accuracy. It can't miss. It can't miss. Um, and that's obviously super powerful, especially if you pair Articuno with the best snow setter in the game, Alola Nine Sails, who also uses Blizzard too. Um, so. I guess we're going to see as we head into the game just right now, um, as we see Arcanine and Wellspring Ogre Palm come out and Chen Pao in Gouging Fire. Yes, I've seen the lead off now. Intimidate's coming into play. Gouging Fire is not going to look that very much. Neither will the Qian Pao, but with the defense being reduced on all sides here, the Qian Pao isn't going to be that hindered by it. We're seeing now Steven considering his first play options. He ended up bringing out the Metagross as well as the Raging Bolt. So, uh, Burning Bulwark is going to be the play for the Gouging Fire. Chen Pao, however, seeing here, I think it might have... It does not have any setup moves, but it's going to go for the Protect. And we're going to see what Jeffrey does in response. The Ivy Cause is going to get blocked by Chen Pao. And the Burning Bulwark, was that going to be affected? Both of them double protecting, so none of them are going to get hit by the Rock Slide. Non-contact move, so uh, Arcanine won't get burned for this. Uh, I don't think it can... Can fire types get burned? Because I know... No. I know electrics can't get um, fire types paralyzed. can't get burned. Okay, so fire it's not it can't get burned regardless, but still um, a nice information gathering turn for uh, all players here. Uh, nobody is going to be taking any damage. And turn one behind us now. Turn two, maybe we're going to see some action underway. Yeah, maybe we'll see some action for sure. It'll be interesting to see what Steven wants to do to sort of play around Jeffrey's uh, sort of lead right now. Um, yeah, obviously the Chen Pao is going to be super weak to, I, I guess you can say, not both, not both Pokemon, but but it's like, yeah, you want to take out the Chen Pao, because Chen Pao can easily fall right here from either and or. And you definitely don't want it to. Yeah, you definitely don't want it. The Rock Slide can come through. It, it doesn't really matter. Chen Pao can easily fall. The Metagross is a good choice. You want to be able to tank those sort of hits. Breaking Swipe is going to be able to get that attack drop. And this is a good start for Steven. And then we'll see what Jeffrey can do right now. Only scary part is the uh, fire typing on the Arcanine Hisui could end up doing a lot of damage to that Metagross with the Flare Blitz, but... Uh, oh, oh! A double, double avoid miss. from Rock Slide. That's crazy. And see, Rock Slide's an 80% accuracy move. Remember when we were talking about the Articuno, how uh, Snow Cloak, you know, makes it so then you, like, you know... Uh, more evasive. And more evasive. More to avoid Th thank you for bringing up the word. No I I'm missing all the words, man. The sickness is not really helping. helping. <laughs> uh, but it makes it more evasive, right? And, and you just see right now an 80 uh, accuracy move just missed both times, w which is like super uncommon. Hey, uncommon or not, Steven Stark's going to take that in full force. We're going to see the Nine Tails coming out, which means we're very likely going to see the Articuno following up, if not this turn, then the next, uh, with that Blizzard being in play. Hal is going to come out to boost the attack of the Metagross and the Gouging Fire, but the Ivy Cudgel coming out once more. Again, hitting the Metagross. Not sure why not opting to hit the Gouging Fire. Well, it's going to be neutral regardless, but the Heavy Crash going to be taking out the Ninetales. The snow is up, but the Articuno has not hit the field yet. I'm sure you're going to want to go for it sometime soon, but you also are losing out yeah. on Pokemon to switch into. So we're going to see the Articuno coming out. It is going to be a fire type and a steel type out here. Bullet Punch could threaten the Articuno pretty heavily here, but again, Snow yeah. Cloak comes into play. One miss here could be huge. Like you said, yeah, one miss can be huge. Gouging Fire is just going to be neutral, obviously, because of its Dragon Dual type. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see kind of what happens here. This Metagross, though, obviously you don't want Metagross to go up against the Articuno if you're, like, you know, Jaffrey, for example. The Terrasalization is going to come through. If it is on Joffrey's side, it's going to be the Articuno and the Ice type. Yeah, it's going to be Articuno yeah. Terrasalizing to Ice, making that Blizzard extra, extra powerful um, as we see that coming through. And obviously, like we said, it's just going to be clicking Blizzard Spam. Blizzard Spam is going to be the name of the game so far, plus the redirections coming up from the Ogre Pond just to make it even harder to do anything about this Articuno. Another Howl is going to be coming out, coming into play, and... 
before we see, yeah, we're gonna see the Blizzard coming out. Can a Freeze come out from this one? I believe the Freeze chance in Blizzard's 30%. Oh, and we do see the Freeze come out on Metagross. This is huge. Ogre Pong goes for the follow me, knowing that Metagross is probably gonna go for that heavy slam or oh. that bullet punch, but breaks out immediately. Oh my god, what? Steven is insanely lucky this game. Not Wait. only does he get the double miss on the rock slide in what? the first turn, but also instant unfreezes off of that freeze. That's insane. So wait, they changed the freeze mechanic then, because I'm pretty sure before the only way to unfreeze was with fire type moves hitting you. There was no way to unfreeze before, right? No, you can unfreeze. So what's the mechanic now? It's the same. It's okay. been the same. How can a Pokemon unfreeze? It, unf it has a chance to unfreeze every turn. What, what percent chance? I don't know what percent okay, chance. Just a low chance. But it has like a it has a lower chance of unfreeze. I knew it was ten percent. Okay, but anyways, okay. Uh, thank you, Matthias, for telling us. Uh, as we're gonna see, the ogre pond is gonna get switched out. I'm pretty sure the only way before was getting hit by fire type moves. Unless I'm thinking about literally Gen One, then that might not be very relevant. But in any case, the intimidate is gonna come out. Metagross is not gonna be affected by it because of the clear body. First time we're gonna see that come into play here. Uh, but a huge hit is gonna be landing on Articuno's head with a breaking swipe follow up, reducing the attack of the Arcanine. Articuno just basically one. One turn on the field, it's already had such a huge impact, but hopefully the second Blizzard here can really have a bigger one. Gonna be able to knock out, oh no, Metagross survives it. Gouging Fire is out, Yeah. Uh, but but this you know, is Metagross fine is though. Still this in. is fine if you're if you're Jeffrey, right? You can easily go E-Speed and then get rid of Metagross, so then mm. there's only one Pokemon on the field next turn. Let's talk about how bulky, like we were talking about before, how bulky Articuno is. Even through the bullet punch from Metagross, it still was like half HP. Still half HP after that bullet punch. Super bulky. That snow, obviously, with the boost of special defense, it is really benefiting this Articuno. Absolutely. Yeah, this Articuno is a huge problem that needs to get dealt with, but it's easier said than done. I'm just already kind of considering the next turn here, but uh, Raging Bolt it might not be the swap in, Owen. How do you feel about it? I don't think Raging Bolt's a swap in. I think you do kind of have to not sack Chen Pao necessarily, but you do have to go for something here. Yeah, there's something. We'll you have to, to try and make something work. At least Chen Pao can get some damage off before, and it'll live this turn. It'll live this turn. If you're Arcanine, you're going for the E-Speed on Metagross, and you're probably going to go for the Blizzard on Chen Pao. Chen Pao is going to be able to go for the Sacred Sword onto Articuno, and since it's faster, hopefully knock it out. But we'll see what happens. The thing is, the Bullet Punch, obviously the play for the Metagross. The thing is, if it is misses... Is Arcanine faster? Uh, Metagross... Metagross with the bullet punch. Bullet punch is a priority move, correct? Yeah, but so is... Wait, but extreme, extreme speed, speed, it doesn't matter. It's double okay. priority. Right, right. So it doesn't even matter if Metagross is faster or not. Arcanine is still going to be able to move first. So we'll see kind of what happens. We'll see if my predictions are right. Yeah, absolutely. So Metagross most likely going to fall here thanks yeah. to that extreme speed. So that's another opportunity for uh, this Articuno to be a problem uh, for Steven Stark. Going to have to switch. Oh, Sacred Sword is oh, going to allow the Articuno yeah. finally to fall. Not going to be able to avoid that one. The real win condition of Jeffrey Yang is going to finally fall. As we're seeing now, the switches coming in. Raging Bolt is finally going to hit the field. Ogre Pond is going to hit the field on Jeffrey's side, but it's so low from all of those previous situations. Now we're feeling the pain. <laughs> yeah, and this is really tough for Jeffrey right now. Steven has like two Pokemon, super, super like high HP, right? Um, Ogre, or was it Ogre Pong who's low, or was it uh, Arcanine? I, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure Ogre Pong was the one. Ogre Pong is very yeah. low. Yeah. Thunderclap will probably come through. I'm sure that they're going to go for the spiky shield. But but it's still extremely difficult to claw back from this if you're Jeffrey right now. Fairy Terra on. No, never mind. Ice type Terra on the Chen Pao. It's or, a ghost. Oh, ghost, my mistake. Yeah. It's not a little crystal in the ball, but that doesn't tell you the whole story. It is going to be the ghost typing, prevent it from getting hit from. Extreme speed. Yeah, extreme speed one. I'm trying to think if there might be any other threats here. Not it at much. least gets it its resistances. Just, just, yeah. Like it takes away its resistances of rock slide and stuff like that. And 
Uh, well, still Chen has Pao. some benefit. Oh, I thought it missed Sacred Sword, but no, it's going to get blocked out by Chen Pao, or um, by Ogre Pond. It's going to get hit by that spiky shield as well. Electro Web, going to get, again, blocked out by the Ogre Pond, but it's going to hit on the Arcanine and reduce the speed of that Arcanine. Not going to matter too much because of the fact that it is going to be using Extreme Speed most likely in the next turn to try to just get something done before it gets knocked out. Uh, you could see... Okay, it's gonna go for Dragon Pulse on that, and then the Sacred Sword onto the Ogre Pond. And that was a quick decision. Steven, very confident in that one. The Extreme Speed not gonna do too a lot to the uh, Raging Bolt. Sacred Sword finally gonna knock down the Ogre Pond. And with Jeffrey Yang's last Pokemon being an Arcanine getting hit by a Dragon Pulse, I think this game might be going yeah. over to Steven Stark. Jeffrey is gonna fall, the Arcanine is gonna fall, and that's Steven taking the first game of the set. Jeffrey was in a good position, though, with that Arcanine to be able to take it, but obviously fell with that Shen Pao coming through. So it, it was still, like, it was a good attempt from Jeffrey, and I do like that he committed to that Arc, 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 Articuno um, in the back line and whatnot. Maybe it wasn't the best executed. I do think both Nine, Alola Ninetales and Articuno being on the same field at the same time is the best way to bring this team out, for sure. You gotta remember, Articuno also wants to click Blizzard too. Articuno also wants to set up Aurora Veil. Exactly. We didn't, we didn't even see, see Aurora Veil, yeah. right? So yeah. it, it is it is something to be aware of. It is something to, you know, remember, like, uh, to think about, right? Yeah, something that we didn't really get to see a factor of here. Yeah, the the, uh, the Aurora Veil is a big part of the strategy because True. on top of the evasion, then even if something does connect with that Aurora Veil, reducing yeah. the damage from both physical and special attacks. Yeah, if that types, Aurora Veil was was up, Articuno probably lives. One hundred percent. Like, to, like to be fair, Articuno yeah. probably lives there. If, for those of you who don't know, Aurora Veil is uh, light screen plus reflect for eight turns because of the fact that they have light clay. Mm -hmm. You can only use it in the snow though. You can only use it in snow, but it sets up snow when exactly. it comes out. Yeah. So, so either way, it, it's up for pretty much the entire game since it's so quick, right? There's no, it's not like singles how there's like 30, 50 turns, <laughs> right? Um, it's going to be up for pretty much the whole game. Um, so I, I do want to see sort of like a maybe different lead here. Maybe Ninetales comes out with mm. Articuno and they just go guns blazing like right away. You never know. We'll have to kind of wait and see what happens. I, I do got to ask you though, mm -hmm. right? Jeffrey was on the back foot towards the end of the game. What do you think is the changeup that they should make? Obviously, I told you what I think. What are your thoughts? Jeffrey, I feel like... It's a little hard because the way that this composition works, yeah. you do have to lean, obviously, onto your Articuno. And, and in order to lean onto Articuno, you have to lean onto your Alolan Ninetales. It's not very comfortable to do that, though, even in the first turn, because it's not holding a Focus Sash. So you have to hope that it survives turn one. It is pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, it just being Ninetales, it's a pretty fast Pokemon. But I feel like it's still risky enough that things can threaten it pretty quickly and get rid of it before it has the yeah. opportunity to use Aurora Veil. And I plus, if that happens, you lose your lead turn. It's just a bad situation all around. As long as Chen Pao isn't on the field, there's no other Pokemon that is faster than Alola Ninetales. Okay. Yeah, so Alolan Ninetales will be the second fastest Pokemon in the entire game out of all the 12. Um, Chen Pao is the only one that's going to be faster at, at like 20 extra points or it whatever. It does have Sacred Sword, but uh, Alolan Ninetales is Fairy Ice. So Fairy Resist Fighting? Am I mistaken on that? Fairy Resist Fighting so Ice obviously neutral. is super effective, so it's going to be a neutral, neutral. hit regardless. Uh, but what we'll kind of see is we're about to head into the game right now, so we'll see the leads. As we did predict correctly, Articuno gotcha. and Alola Ninetales will be the lead for the side of Jeffrey. And we'll have to just kind of wait and see what Steven ends up sending out right now. Yeah, and one thing I did want to mention a little bit is even if Jeffrey's able to recover this game, he's not going to be too happy about it. Because like you said, you want to win this 0-2, or 2-0 rather. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a pretty bad situation to be in all around because your odds of getting to the top cut are still pretty reduced mm -hmm. but as we head into this next game we see the fire gouging fire and the ogre pond uh arcanine is going to get switched out um in place of the alola nine tail so we're not going to see the screen just a little bit i what are your thoughts on that play i'm not too sure how i feel about it but before we go too far into it we're going to see the heat crash come out onto the articuno ivy cudgel going to hit the arcanine which is going to be double effective enough to knock it out completely so yeah turn one not going your way if you're Jeffrey Yang. And you're gonna get the blizzard off. 
you're not going to get a lot out of it though. No freezes, just going to do a lot of damage to the two Pokemon right in front of you. Which of course, always a nice thing to do, but when you lose uh, your Arcanine, you'll lose well you didn't right. lose your uh you didn't lose your alola nine tails but you lost opportunity it was an opportunity cost you lost yes. the opportunity to reduce a significant amount of damage that the, your uh that your articuno just took exactly yeah. so yeah you lost something there yeah jeffrey went for the the read there red went for the he thought that steven was going to go for the heat crash onto the alola nine tails so he ended up switching out. It didn't end up working well, as Steven like completely read that and then went for the Ivy Cudgel onto the Arcanine. Um, but yeah, like we said, Articuno is the fastest Pokemon on the field. After yeah. getting those screens set up, right, the damage would have been super mitigated, and like they both would have still been over half HP, maybe over three fourths HP for both Pokemon. And I feel like that's where a little bit of the VGC like mind poison comes into play where if your Pokemon doesn't have oh okay yeah it's 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 a little it's a little scary right now on Jeffrey Yang's side of the field yeah y you gotta understand that just because you don't have priority you still can move before other Pokemon you know y you gotta just trust the heart of the cards sometimes but as we see the terrestrialization type coming out onto the landers I believe that's going to be the steel typing uh, with the heat crash hitting the nine tails uh, and the Landorus going to be able to take out the Gouging Fire at the very least. Um, it was at about half HP, so that is to be expected. Ninetales uh, going to... Oh, never mind. The Ogre Pond is going to use the Ivy Cudgel onto the Landorus. Going to do a decent amount of damage, but your Ninetales now out on the field. It's at about half HP. The only fastest Poke other faster Pokemon on the board. Oh, actually not going to offer the champ out. We're going to be sending out the Metagross. Um, so maybe Bullet Punch. In fact, Bullet Punch is going to be enough to knock out the yeah. um, the Ninetales. So if you're Jeffrey, Jeffrey, you're extremely scared of Metagross right now, especially for Ninetales, right? Because Ninetales are just going to fall immediately from Bullet Punch as it's quad weak to it, right? Um, no protect on the nine tails either. No so. protect on the nine tails, obviously, because nine tails is supposed to come in, set up the screens. But we haven't seen him do that at no. not at all, not a single time, right? Jeffy is trying to do like these crazy reads and stuff like that, but it's not really working. Jeffrey needed in the first game, in the in the start of this game, needed to come out, set up screens, and, and you know try and play their hand and not try and play the opponent's game. Play your game. So we'll see what happens here as Okapom goes for follow me. Follow me to redirect any attacks coming out from Jeffrey's side. Metagross is going to knock out the Ninetales, get this Pokemon out of here. No Auroraville. Like you mentioned, not having Protect doesn't even matter on Ninetales because Aurora Veil is like a multi-turn Protect for both Pokemon. You don't really don't need to Protect in that situation, but Ogre Pond finally going to go down thanks to the Sludge Bomb from the Landorus. Now you just have your Chen Pao and your Metagross on the back line, but these are two Pokemon you're always happy to see. Articuno coming out once more, and here's the thing. The snow I, is about to fall, though. Exactly. That's the point I was about to make. I also wanted to also mention, like, there, there's been a lot of missed opportunities in this um, game, but Articuno is so strong that it almost doesn't matter. We'll have to kind of wait and see. I mean, Metagross is able to tank one of these hits, right? Mm. It, it is a 2v2, so we do have a potential. Where... We do have a Steel-type Landorus out, though. I feel like with if Blizzard if one Blizzard goes off, I feel like Jeffrey kind of just takes the yeah. game. There, there is a chance, right? The bullet punch is going to come through and do a considerable amount of damage onto the Articuno, and Landorus falls. It, it's up to the Articuno now, but Articuno, it, it, it's it's a it's a done day. It's a done. Day. It's, yeah, I'm pretty confident that the game is done. Steven Stark is going to take this one, two zero. -oh. That is yeah. the favorable position that you want to see. Like you mentioned, uh, if you want to have any chance for the top cut, you want to make sure that you're doing so in a 2-0 fashion. And that's exactly yeah. what Steven Stark's going to be doing here with the Sucker Punch Comes to finish things punch. off. Doesn't even go to the next turn. And that's just it. Steven picks up the game 2 to nothing, And that's what you wanted coming into this. You wanted to win the set 2-0, to have the potential to make it to the top cut if it did go to game three. I don't think either or trainer would have made it necessarily we'd have to wait and see kind of the results from the rest of the tournament but this is still a good result from steven and, and i do gotta like say I, they said ggs you know they're doing another handshake stuff like that I, I i gotta talk to you about this jeffrey man Let, let's talk about jeffrey what do you what do you think he could have done better mm, well you know i you know we kind of talked about it a little bit you know <laughs> i don't want to go too deep into it but for sure i feel like the aurora coming out turn one instead of the switch out right 
probably would have done a lot for him. I have to agree with you. I don't feel like you got much use out of the Alola Nine Cells. Uh, at all. You got it, like, ever. Ever. Not, at, not, at a single, not a single bit. We have to understand that Snow coming out gives you huge defensive boost on two Pokemon that are already pretty bulky, especially on the special side. Like, Alola Nine Cells has a ton of special defense. Mm -hmm. Alongside of the fact that it's super fast and is able to get up the screens faster than any Pokemon like is on the entire on the field, field, right? Yeah. You don't need priority. So, so already special defense boosted another form of defense boosted on both sides. So it's going to be able to take those hits that Articuno doesn't want to take that alone. The doesn't want to take, and we saw it, right? We saw even these special like hits. Yeah. These uh, heat crashes coming through. I'm not didn't sure. do that much to really like sort of uh, put it in on the back foot. Right. So I, I, I'm not too sure. Uh, where Jeffrey's head at was in that situation. I would love to go and talk to Jeffrey afterwards and sort of like sort of see where you know where the decision sort of came from. But even still, still great plays from Steven as well. Like we For gotta sure. say, Steven did play very well around uh, what Jeffrey was doing. Jeffrey was kind of going for those hard reads, and Steven was like, "No, I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna play my game. I'm gonna let Jeffrey do what he wants to do, mm -hmm. and, and I'm just gonna take from here." Uh, talk about Steven's game, though. What do you think are some things that Steven did sort of well? I, like you said, played his game solid. And yeah. I really feel like in a competition like this especially, as long as you're doing what you know you need to be doing, you're winning the game. Uh, you don't need to do anything fancy. A team like this as well, what, what, what can't even do this fancy? Nothing. You just win, right? You just play your field and you win. Mm. That's exactly what Steven was able to do. Use his Chen Pal very effectively. Yeah. Um, use, use the uh, Metagross. A Pokemon we didn't even see a single time on the first time we did this event, um, but now we've seen it twice already today. It's been a huge threat both times. Just complete random thoughts coming to my mind right now. Love to see it run explosion. I think that'd be cool. Um, but in any case, uh, you know, we're seeing the Metagross being used very highly effectively yeah. as well. But, you know, like you said, very curious to see what both players are thinking. But as I believe that was the last round it was. of Swiss. Before we go into top cut, it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see what players did make the top cut, you know, for sure. Yeah, going to be interested to find that out. But as we get ready to send it to a quick break, I want to remind you all that all the action we saw here today was just the prelude. It was just the introduction to the real meat that we're going to be getting into the top cut. Again, this is where all the points, those sweet, sweet points to qualify for Worlds is going to be coming into play. So if you thought any bit of this was interesting, trust me, you haven't even seen half of it yet. So stay tuned as we get ready to head into the top eight.